mid-October, the invasion fleet began the last leg of the trip to the objective. The mighty armada included combat and assault vessels of all types, escorted by six battleships. Aboard the cruiser Nashville, General MacArthur was confident of the success of his mission as he surveyed the powerful fleet. This impressive convoy was transporting some 170,000 American soldiers to the invasion beaches on Leyte. GIs from Oregon and Ohio, Mississippi and Montana, all intent on paying the Japanese back for Bataan and Corregidor. On the morning of October 20th, the invasion fleet stood off Leyte, and the assault troops moved toward shore near Tacloban. The first wave was scheduled to hit the beach at 10 o'clock. The assault on Leyte carried the fighting forces of the Southwest Pacific some 2,500 miles from the point on New Guinea where the offensive against the enemy in that theater had begun. Right on schedule, the assault troops landed. Soldiers of the 10th Corps of the U.S. 6th Army. The landing near Tacloban went off smoothly, and U.S. forces quickly set about securing a position of sufficient area to facilitate a successful defense. On the Nashville, General MacArthur and Philippine President Sergio Osmeña prepared to go ashore several hours after the first waves landed. Osmania was returning to his native land after an absence of some two and a half years. The general set foot on Philippine soil for the first time since his departure from Corregidor in March 1942. About 20 miles to the south at Dulag, GIs of the 24th Corps made a second landing, coordinated with the invasion near Tacloban. <laughs> By the end of D-Day, the beaches were secure, and the area was given enemy mines. While the beachhead was being cleared, the 96th Division advanced along the flank. At Dulag, too, the invasion was a complete success. But the U.S. advantage was not to go unchallenged. 